My name is Lisa Burroughs and this is my studio. It is an eclectic place that mixes the old with the new, a metaphor for how I understand myself as a textile artist. My collection of antiques and reproductions are nostalgic reminders to me that I am part of a tradition that is steeped in history. Centuries ago, quilts were made by hand and later by machine to recycle and extend the life of remnants of cloth. With the consumer culture of North America we live in today, the need to create textile products and the skill set to do so are quickly disappearing. As a textile artist and home economics teacher, I am concerned about how to best preserve this knowledge and pass it down to future generations. I am also very excited about how this century-old art form can move in new directions with the use of modern technology and innovative thinking. People often ask me how I evolved into a textile artist. From a very young age, I was curious about working with my hands. My childhood drawings were extensions of my imagination and were quite detailed, not unlike my work today. I started to sew by hand to make clothes for my dolls. Later in high school, I took art and home economics classes, which developed my skills in both areas. These two passions flourished and coexisted throughout high school, but didn't intersect until I began to study fashion design in college. During my undergraduate degree in art education, I first began to think of fabric as an art medium. During this time, I also discovered the artwork of M.C. Escher, whose tessellating drawings I found fascinating. Here were these complex drawings that provide us with just a glimpse of a foundational shape that seems to simplify and explain the chaos elsewhere. His work really caused me to look at the world differently. I started looking for the structural underpinning that could simplify otherwise complex compositions, which invited unexpected results in my art. Using textiles as a medium for the first time, I put Escher's tessellating idea to practice in this piece called Two Cans of Cat Food. Material selection is an important part of my studio practice. Part of being a textile artist demands an ever-expanding collection of fabrics and notions. In my studio, I like to organize my fabrics into containers on the basis of color or theme. If I am looking for inspiration, I can just pull one of these boxes down and arrange the contents in a way that can help me appreciate how they work together. This is my dragonfly collection. Escher's ideas continue to influence my textile art today as I am trying to understand how the whole is comprised of pieces that fit together like a puzzle. How an object can materialize with a single repeated shape and how I can tame chaos of so many different colors and patterns of fabric by using structure. The questions that drive my studio practice are centered on how I can innovate by cross-pollinating traditional art making methods with sewing. Can I create a fabric sculpture? Can I make a fabric mosaic? Can I paint on fabric? Can I make a painting out of fabric? My working methods are undergoing a kind of revolution too, as I learn to integrate a digital studio into my physical one. In a recent project, I was able to process photographs in Photoshop and develop them into a pattern to work from. Technology allowed me to scan fabrics from my collection and bring them into my digital composition before committing to them. Once a pattern was developed and fabrics were chosen, the difficult work of assembly began. The hardest part about being a textile artist is the amount of commitment needed to execute a project from beginning to end. Whether sewing by machine or by hand, projects require a significant investment of time. Hours upon hours of asking myself, what have you gotten yourself into? And hours upon hours of being my own cheerleader. Part of being a textile artist is having the stamina and persistence to move a project beyond the initial idea that can be quite exciting, right through the stages of often tedious work to eventually see a project through to completion. There is much satisfaction in that.